Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today I'm talking about uh, the new album from Steve Aoki, uh, Neon Future 3. Steve Aoki, he, uh, he is a thing. He is among the most commercial of commercial EDM artists. He's along the levels of David Guetta and Calvin Harris, but he is interesting in that I don't think he's made any tracks I've heard so far that I outright hate. He's certainly not consistently awful and lacking in style like Guetta, and while he doesn't have high points as high as Calvin Harris's, he doesn't have low points as low as his either. He does have a semi-recognizable style, too. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I loved his stuff. I don't. <laughs> I think he's just alright, and his production tends to be pretty flat and just trying to sound big for bigness' sake, but you can also do a lot worse than him. He's like, slightly below average, but you know. I've heard three albums of his before this one. His debut album, Wonderland, was... Uh, I don't actually remember much of anything about that album besides maybe having LMFAO on it, and that's never good. <laughs> but once again, I don't remember strongly disliking it. And Neon Future 1 and 2 are honestly kind of guilty pleasures of mine. Pretty decent and memorable albums. They mainly stuck out to me thanks to some interludes with scientists and writers talking over them that I don't think were all that deserved, admittedly. <laughs> Makes these albums sound like they're trying to be smarter and more important than they actually are. I mean, Neon Future 1 and 2 are not a remotely smart set of albums, and the concept behind them is as transparently underbaked as you can get. Like, he almost tries for a bit on the first one until Waka Flocka Flame shows up and throws out all illusions of a concept out the window. But as far as just bottom of the barrel EDM pop goes, the Neon Future projects were, you know, fairly enjoyable for what they were. And they had their fair share of standout cuts, despite some serious duds on both volumes, there was at least always a sense of being entertained. I could go down so many problems and things I don't like about both projects, but there's something about them I can't help but enjoy. Like, he's not all that talented or has much potential, but he's trying his absolute hardest. I heard he also had an album of trap music that was pretty controversial, but I didn't actually listen to that, so I can't really give you thoughts on those. I just know that I was interested enough in this third Neon Future project to give it a go. I wasn't expecting anything higher than the sixth range, or much outside of a lot of okay pop crossover attempts. But it would make for an interesting video, I guess? So, uh, what do we get with Neon Future 3? Ooh. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty bad. It's a step down from the first two, honestly. Even blander and more washed out. It's a collection of really formulaic pop EDM with lots of chord progressions, which are consistently almost the four chords, but not quite. It's still not quite terrible, but I have far less of an urge to want to return to this than the last two Neon Future volumes. Thinking about the concept is pretty pointless. Aoki himself says the album is about embracing technology, but it's basically only about that on the level that it's an electronic album and it goes no deeper than that. If you look at the lyrics, I don't think there's a single track here that's actually about embracing technology or the future or anything like that. In fact, there's basically nothing of substance here at all. But that was also kind of true of the first two Neon Future albums, and those were still at least more fun to listen to. This is just a really long, overstuffed, samey drag of an album that offers very little as far as discussion material goes. That said, Aoki's production isn't awful. It, it, it just has less flavor than usual. Like, he used to have this one particular synth setting that just sounded like this big, fleshy, monolithic wall of synth that he used all the time. <laughs> And I just naturally started to associate that particular setting with him, specifically. This album utilizes that synth tone on, like, three tracks at best. More often here, he uses, like, that trap horn blare sound, and it sounds fine, and he can work it into some pretty hard-hitting productions, but I'd be a lot less likely to recognize that stuff as him. I guess there were four tracks on here I thought were fun enough. I actually really like the intro, pretty epic, bombastic instrumental to start us off, and Who Villa, while, uh, basically a big room track. It was at least fun for what it was, kept up its momentum consistently. Be Somebody with Kiara is pretty bland at first, but the drop is really expansive and hard-hitting and satisfying. 
I also thought Golden Days with Jim Adkins from Jimmy Eat World was pretty fun too, and marks a return of that above-mentioned wall of synth tone that he uses. And uh, Adkins sounds like, you know, he's, he's having fun over this production, I guess. But yeah, those are probably the best tracks on this thing. I was hoping to also list the ending track with Bill Nye on it, Noble Gas, but that was actually a bit of a letdown. Like, the science interludes on the other two Neon Future albums didn't actually do much besides talk about cool, optimistic sentiments for the future, and Bill Nye tries to take it a step further by going a bit more into actual science, talking about life on Mars and stuff like that, but he does kind of lose me at the very end where he talks about the Neon Future literally being about the actual noble gas. You know what the future is? The future is neon, atomic number 10, in his words. And I was just like, okay, wait, what? Like, I, I, I could buy neon future as a concept before about being how the future is bright and shiny and all the optimism, but literally being about the actual element? I mean, if Bill actually explained how that might work, that'd be one thing, but a future literally powered by neon gas. Sounds pretty ridiculous to me. <laughs> Not that scientific, honestly. There Will Come a Time by Orbital and Brian Cox, this ain't. But never mind that, even if Bill Nye is just spouting random, disparate, not that obscure science facts like defining what Neon actually is and making it sound neat because he's Bill Nye, I think the bigger problem with that track is that it just sounds kinda crap. Like, Bill Nye's voice was put through some weird filter that I don't think sounds nearly as cool as Aoki thinks it does, and the rest of the instrumental afterwards is just kind of crashing noise that just kind of falls flat for me. Yeah, that's the ending was a bit of a letdown. But unfortunately, those are the good tracks on here. Uh, everything else, I mean, I guess Aoki's production and instrumentals are okay, totally blown out and in your face, but acceptable for the genre, but what kills the majority of this album is the fact that I can't tell apart the vast majority of the guest features. They're all super generic and no one really delivers much of any personality. I mean, the track with the least generic sounding guests is probably Pretender featuring AJR and Lil Yachty. I don't think much more needs to be said. Though I will say that Lil Yachty was at least decently enjoyable here, at least kinda sounding like he's having fun, kinda sorta, despite talking about not having fun. I mean, he's certainly better than AJR. Those guys make me cringe every second they're on the mic. Sure, it's not flavorless, but it's a flavor I could do without. And I guess Azukito with Daddy Yankee and some other people stand out because it's in Spanish, but I'm not about to give my thumbs up to Aoki just following the recent reggaeton trend. But everyone else, like, Mike Posner sounds like a robot. If I didn't see his name, I wouldn't have been able to guess it was him. And he has a pretty unique voice. And Blink-182, they are... there. And, I mean, I'll admit I do not really listen to Blink-182. I guess they have some presence here and are notable for having less vocal effects in parts, but they still don't stick out much. Same with BTS, I mean... <laughs> I know these guys have an insanely intense fan base that's desperately trying to make them a thing, but I can't tell them apart from any other vocal guests here. Like, they come right after that hit he had with Louis Tomlinson a few years ago, and they just... I, I can't really tell the, the, the guy from BTS apart from Louis Tomlinson. They basically sound like the same person almost. And I can't even really go into the second half of this project in much detail because I can tell apart the female singers even less. I guess there's one with someone from Fifth Harmony and uh, Lady Antebellum is here too and doesn't stand out at all. Like uh, the last time Steve Aoki tried to sound countryish with Home Will Go was pretty obnoxious, but I at least remember that one. This one just blends in with all the others aside from the Odessa drop. The track Do Not Disturb, I guess, has some cool tropical house sounds in it, but I don't really like the singer. I mean, I've listened to this album several times. I'm just drawing a complete blank for anything to say at all on the vast majority of it. 17 tracks and so little to note. That's the thing about this album that makes it notably worse than the first two Neon Futures. This album, more than anything, is just flat boring. It's just pure, bland EDM pop that sounds like it could have been popular in 2014, but so little of it leaves any impression at all. Every time I hear it, it just goes in one ear and out the other with only a couple of choice moments resonating with me on any level. And it's so long on top of that! Well, I mean, not by its actual length. 57 minutes doesn't look that bad, but... 
it's so many forgettable, bland, nondescript EDM anthems weigh this thing down a ton. It just really drags on and on, and I don't see how anything on here is going to stick with me past this video. Hell, I'll even give a point towards Geta's last album, discounting the bonus mixtape. That album, if nothing else, was entertaining. I had fun talking about it. It was entertaining for all the wrong reasons, but I may have had more fun listening to that than I did hearing this. But by the same token, Neon Future 3 is definitely more competent and not even close to as embarrassing. Despite all the crossover appeal, Steve Aoki is at least Steve Aoki. If I'm not paying attention to anything going on, it's a kind of fun listen in the background. There's no drops that made me cringe. AJR was probably the most cringeworthy part of this thing. This album had the exact same aim that the first two Neon Futures did, just a mindless fun with a shiny presentation, and Aoki himself, for the most part, is doing his job fine, delivering loud, hard-hitting EDM beats that are acceptable enough. I mean, what if this were an instrumental album? Steve Aoki might be able to pull that off. Like, take out all the boring clickbait guest features and it'd be a lot better. Well, okay, maybe not a lot better. It'd basically just be like that last Steve Angelo album, which was also kind of boring and samey and way too freaking long for its own good. But that album was at least decent and an interesting risk. I don't know. Uh... I guess I'm just kind of rambling at this point. Neon Future 3, it's mediocre as hell, I'm not going to recommend it to anyone. I'm overall feeling a solid 4 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion, you can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. If you want to add yourself to that list or make me review something, linked to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it, so that's all for today, see you next time.